right. Yeah, I'm going to motivate you a little bit with something that happened to me a little while ago, a couple of years ago. Now, I, like our, our host Michelle said, I love working in um, situations where there was domestic violence. I actually came out of a, a domestically violent um, marriage. And while I was getting myself together, I started on a road of helping myself. So I subscribed to something that gave me an email every single day with a motivation. And one day I got this motivation that I kind of didn't really like. Never get those. They're kind of like bite you in the butt kind of motivation because they really kind of make you see your life as it is. And that morning I got an email that said that as human beings, we think one way about middle age. How many people think middle age is about 50? Let me see your hands. Yeah. Well, the average human being lives to be about 72. So that email said that 30, 36 was middle age. that one was wrong, but I'm on the other side of 36. No. So, no. <laughs> Thank you, I love you. <laughs> I'm on the other side of 36 and it had me thinking. And I, I came up with three things that I decided to live my life doing instead of how I was living before. And how I was living before was not that great. I decided, number one, I was going to live life lightly. Number two, I decided I was going to live life liberally. And the third thing I decided was that I was going to leave and live a legacy. So let's get to the first point. Live life lightly. I don't know if you could see me up here, but these thighs, <laughs> I went heavy on the cheesecake and the cupcake. So that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is we have a tendency as human beings, or at least I do, of holding on to things that really don't matter. We have a tendency to hold grudges for things that won't matter today, tomorrow, next week. And as a result, sometimes we don't even talk to relatives because of it. I decided that that was not going to be something I was going to do. The second thing I decided, I said, was live liberally. Conservatives, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not talking politics. I'm talking about expanding our horizons. How many of you have a bucket list? How many of you have actually checked things off your bucket list? All right, cool. I have a bucket list. One of the things on that bucket list was get into water. I, as a young girl, was kind of feared into not going into water and boats and things like that because I was in the West Indies and I was on a glass bottom boat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and the glass bottom boat, well, it kind of was made by the person who drove the boat. So <laughs> I really got scared of going into boats and to large bodies of water. And I decided one day that I was going to actually look that fear in the eye. And how I did that was by saying I was going to go sailing. Uh, yeah. And then I forgot about it. I made the decision, I told the person I was gonna actually go sailing and I forgot about it until two hours before and he called me and said, are you coming? And I said, yeah. Got dressed. As I'm running out the door, my daughter says, where are you going, mom? I said, I'm going sailing. She's like, cool. You do know you're afraid of water. <laughs> I said, too late. And I got down to Lake Ontario and I said, that fear ends today. I got on the sailboat and there were points in time I was 45 degree angle, getting wet, and I decided I was going to have fun. Even though before then it was something that I was very afraid of. 
And since then, I've gone into pools, I've gone into the ocean, I have a bathing suit I didn't have one since I was 18 years old. So, it is something that really can make your life so much more enjoyable. The third thing I decided was to live and leave a legacy. I say live and leave because a lot of people look to leaving a legacy, but they don't actually realize they could live one too. I go into this point in three ways. First of all, there's something that you do well, and there's someone out there that does it or has done it already. Get a hero. Get someone that you can emulate, someone you can look up to. It may not be someone famous, it may just be someone that you really, really admire. This person can just kind of help you see where you're going to go, because they've already done it before you. Success leaves tracks, so if you look at them, chances are you can also be successful. With that, I'm going to just give you two caveats. That person you should try to emulate should not be someone who has led a tormented life with narcotics and things like that, because that will also get you down the wrong path. <laughs> and number two, you shouldn't emulate someone who's died a traumatic death, because that could also lead you down the wrong path. For instance, if you are 26 and you're emulating someone who died at 28, <laughs> the last thing that I recommend when you're learning to live and leave a legacy is to figure out where you want to put your time, talent, and treasure. Where do you want to volunteer? Where do you want to give your spare time? Where do you want to give things that you could do? What if you are a good carpenter, but you really don't do that as a living? You could volunteer somewhere and actually be, do, use your talent to help a third world country or even organizations. There's so many organizations that are looking for help. And there are so many things that you can do, whether it be just reading to a senior or singing to a senior if you play the guitar really well. There are so many things that you can do to give if you have money, give. I volunteer, and I, I can tell you, it is one of the best things that I do. It gives me back so much satisfaction when I volunteer, and I can see that it's making a difference in somebody's life. So, first of all, live lightly. What are you hanging on to that you really don't need to? Moms? I'm speaking myself here. Sometimes you got to let go of what the kids are telling you. Number two, expand your horizons. Live liberally. Check off some of the things on your bucket list. And number three, leave and live a legacy. Some of you are saying 36. That's an odd number. For me, I was thinking, you know what, I'm going to live a long time. And as Michelle asked, how many of you were here in June for the Moment Day? Nobody? Okay. All right. So I was here at the Moment Day in June as well. And in July, I was planning on being on holiday, so I knew I wasn't going to be at the Moment Day. Just to bring my point home, that you should really grasp your life. On that moment, Monday, I was in the hospital after having a life-saving operation. We don't know how long we have. Grasp your life. 36. I'm thinking that most of us are on the other side of 36, looking at the crowd. There might be a few with the kids back there that are on the better side of 36. We are on the side of 36 where we really need to figure out are we going to just live our life, or are we going to make a difference? And I just saw this quote by Eleanor Roosevelt, and I want to end with that. The purpose of life, after all, is to live it.
to taste, experience to the utmost, to reach out eagerly and without fear for newer and richer experiences. I hope that's your life now. Thank you.